Here's a 10 minute video on your Jaguar XK Art convertible top pressure relief valve installation to prevent the dreaded hydraulic green shower. People who've experienced this have a cleanup job, uh, but if your convertible hydraulic lines have not yet failed, this video might be appropriate. Good step-by-step -step procedures are online for replacing the OEM hoses that burst or are leaking from excess pressure. But again, if yours hasn't burst yet, you might wanna consider a low pressure relief valve. The hydraulic system upgrade for the 96 to 2006 Jaguar XKR and XA8 sells for about a thousand bucks and even more so it's a two day job. Meticulous disassembly is needed to get the hoses routed properly from front to back and side to side of the car. I chose not to do that based on this very simple pressure diagram. It's shown here in the blue line, the valve presents, prevents pressures from exceeding 1,000 PSI. If you are raise, raising and lowering your top, you can hear the pump straining here in the diagram where it says deadhead, and the pump is actually pushing pressures exceeding 1,500 PSI. And I think that is why those hoses are popping. And this is the kit, very simple pressure relief valve, two adapters and two hoses and some cable ties. First step is to remove the side cover to reveal the trump pump. Helps to remove the uh, cover off the tail light. Just pull the side cover off. Fuse box is right here. Top pump is your only 40 amp fuse. So I might as well pull that while I'm here just to be sure we don't short anything out. Looks like the pump is held on with T30 Torx. Just loosen those up. The T30 Torx bit. Torx. Might as well get your Allen wrench out of the way. I'm using the uh, long shanked uh, T30 to remove the, uh, the pump plug from the pump. Disconnect the electricals. Since I pulled the fuse, there's no issue here. Yellow to yellow, white to black. Pump should be free by now. Okay, here's the pump still hooked up to the hoses, but uh, on top of a cardboard box just so it's has something to sit on. I'm gonna open this valve counterclockwise to release the system pressure. Take our T30 torque bit and remove the side plug. Put the pump on the side, take out the uh, plug. There it is. Put it someplace where you can find it later. Now I'm going to insert hose number one. Hose number one is the only male ended hose in the kit. And it goes right in that hole. I have to rotate this right angle fitting ever so slightly to allow me to put on that hose. Let's thread this in here, hose number one. Hose number one is uh, 7 sixteenths or 11 millimeters. Use the adapter to connect the uh, hose number one to the valve, which is clearly marked two, one. One goes there, like so. Pretty tight. Okay, you're gonna turn the plum pump over to the other side using handy USPS priority mailboxes for support. And uh, take out this plug here. That pops right out. Hose number two uses another one of these adapters. Make sure there's O-rings on both ends of the adapter and it simply screws into the hole. Be 
these adapters again have o rings on both ends. I'm not going to use any Teflon tape here. Number two fitting goes into number two hole. Could tighten it up with a 5 8 inch socket. Tight. comes with a pair of zip ties to hold the pressure valve or pressure relief valve in place and now it's time to test it uh, the white cardboard is handy because if there's a leak uh, it's gonna be easy to spot well in order to test the top we're going to plug the electricals back in on a temporary basis all right two plugs power all the hoses are on fuse is back in Let's see if it works. Well, I don't have a pressure gauge on the system, but it certainly sounded better. And as I can see here, there's no leaking from the pump. You have to feel around the back to make sure the uh, hose number two or the hose number one is clearing the antenna mast. You could get caught there. But there is plenty of room there as long as you clear that mast. I imagine these T30s need not be very tight at all. Mount is nice and solid. No sign of leakage. used to make a real loud growling sound at the very end of the travel. Top up, top down. And I don't hear that sound anymore. I reinstall the side cover, just tuck it in the rear side cover up under here, the lip of the trunk. Make sure you don't obscure or hide the emergency trunk release, unless of course you're planning on transporting individuals in the trunk. done.